What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's update. Happy Wednesday. Today is April 15th, which normally would signify tax day. However, due to the extreme situations of the coronavirus going on, those have been delayed until July 15th. So for all you procrastinators who don't like to get your taxes done, it's probably good for you, right? So <laughs> hopefully that helps. Let's jump into the Trade Hacker question of the day coming today from my main man, O. Why do SPX and SPY perform slightly different? So let's go to the platform and take a look. So you'll notice SPY is at about minus 1.66% for the day. Whereas if you look at SPX, it's down about 1.73%. So there's always going to be a slight variance between the two. So why is that? Well, we know that the size difference, right? We know that SPX is 10 times the size of SPY, but that doesn't really tell us the story of why there's the variance. The real story is because SPY is an ETF and SPX is simply the S&P 500 index. It's an index. So with an ETF, you can actually buy and sell shares of SPY, whereas you cannot buy and sell shares of SPX. We know that we can trade options on the index, we can trade options on SPX, and we can trade options on SPY, but SPY is the only one that you can actually buy and sell shares of because it's an ETF, whereas SPX is actually an index. So why does that make a difference? So why, you know, coming back to the original question, why is there a variance? If you go to your Analyze tab and click on Fundamentals in Thinkorswim, uh, we're looking at SPY, couple things that you'll notice, and two of the main reasons that there's always a slight variance is ETFs have what's called an expense ratio. So if you were to just buy that, you're going to pay 0.09%, so basically less than one-tenth of 1% 1 as the annual expense ratio to hold that fund, to hold that ETF. So that plays into it. SPX is just the index. It doesn't have an expense ratio. Second, SPY pays a dividend. And so that's going to that's going to factor into the pricing. Now, if you're trading options on SPY, the dividend is just the the price of those options is just adjusted. We talked about that in a couple couple videos ago, but that is the main reason you've got the dividend that SPY has and you've got an expense ratio. And then, you know, remember, I mean SPY is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. So there is going to be some slight, ever so slight tracking error. So when I, you know, the, the arbitragers out there who are trying to scrape portions of pennies off the top as they're providing liquidity to the markets and, and trading back and forth, they're keeping that in line. So there's no discrepancy. And so, you know, SPY, SPX, they're the most liquid underlings out there. So there's almost never barely any slight variance. However, that's part of the reason too. So it is an ETF tracking the S&P 500. So there's going to be that tiny, tiny bit of a slight tracking error from time to time. And then we've got the expense ratio and we've got the dividend. And that, my friends, is why you see the slight difference between the two. So hopefully that helps. Let's go to the charts and take a look at what's happening in the markets today. S&P's up 57, Dow up 415, NASDAQ up 68, and Russell down. These are all down, 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 down today. So a big down day actually coming off of the lows. Uh, we're down quite a bit more. S&P's were down as much as 80 some at one point. So have shed some of those losses, but uh, a decent down day nonetheless. Oil's pretty flat, gold down a little bit. Bonds are up pretty sizable, up over a percent and a half, and then natty gas down about three and a half percent. So making some moves in the market. If we look at some of the stocks and what's going on there, you know, most obviously with the markets down, pretty much everything is down, but you do have some that are up, namely uh, Amazon. No surprise there. I mean, they're they're actually benefiting from this corona economy that we live in today. If we look at year to date, I mean, they, and they've been on fire the last three days, but you know. Amazon's up 22% year to date in the middle of this recession. You've got Alibaba, another online service, uh, doing good today. You've got eBay, you know, that, that kind of makes sense. People are at home bidding on stuff, apparently. Google's up a little bit. 
You've got Netflix up 5%. Netflix has just been on fire too, now up 31% year to date. A lot of people Netflixing and chilling as they're at home. I don't know if that was the proper way to say it, but uh, Roku, another streaming service up big. So that makes sense. The one that it just continues to be baffling is Tesla, right? I mean, think about Tesla. $100,000 cars, you know, that's usually for times of discretionary income. You'd think that uh, discretionary income is not necessarily what everybody's about right now, but uh, nonetheless, Tesla exploding. Tesla has actually over doubled. Let me go back to the price chart on a three month. You know, it got down to as low as 350 and it's over 700. It has doubled since its bottom. So crazy move in Tesla. What else is going on here? Well, we've got earnings. You know, I mentioned yesterday that Goldman Sachs was going to announce this morning. So they opened up down, but have rallied back to up positive on the day. Uh, bank of America was the other big bank. It's still down uh, about 5% on the day. So not massive moves, but uh, but they are out. So what's next on the hit list for earnings? Well, we've got uh, UAL, United Airlines, comes out on the 17th. We've got Delta Airlines, comes out on, I think, the 22nd-ish. Yeah, 22nd. So that's the main industry kind of next. Uh, we do have some tech starting to announce as well. Netflix comes out with their earnings announcement on... 421. So coming up here as well. So that's what's going on today. We did not enter any new positions. We closed out a portion of our oil trade, booked a nice profit on the on that portion of the trade. Still trying to get back to profits after that huge oil crisis slam that we got. So nice to uh, start working our way back there. Uh, other than that, no new trades. We do want to start entering some iron ducks as the market goes down. Uh, I was looking at entering one today, but going to give it another day, see if we can get you know two days in a row back to back to the downside, and then we'll start dipping our toes back in the duck hunting season. So that's what we got going on. Everybody have a great evening. Talk to you tomorrow.